Okay, so you'll have to excuse the diagram here because I'm really bad at drawing this. But today's condition is aortic stenosis. Now, this is generally a, a congenital issue, so it's basically a, a problem that animals are born with, although it generally isn't apparent until they're, they're a few months old. And so this can actually be missed on the initial puppy, puppy checks. So aortic stenosis, we tend to divide it into two groups. We the most common form is what we call a subaortic stenosis. So we basically get a narrowing of the blood vessel where the um, aorta, so the main blood vessel, is, is leaving the heart and just near the valve. We can actually also get a stenosis affecting the valve itself, so um, a true aortic valvular stenosis, but that's a lot less common. So this subaortic stenosis is really the most common thing that we're going to see. And we tend to see that mostly in large breed dogs. Um, boxers, golden retrievers are probably over overrepresented, um, but large any large breed dogs. And what we tend to find with this is it's a condition that we tend to notice more as they, as they age. So probably around 12 weeks of age, we should be able to pick this up in most dogs. Um, but generally, with, by the time they're 12 months old, things have really developed about as far as they're, as they're going to. So what we'll notice, for very mild cases, we might just have a very small narrowing of aorta, and that might just cause a bit of turbulence that um, we can pick up as a, as a heart murmur, but the, it doesn't actually cause any clinical signs for, or symptoms for the dog. So the dog lives a normal, happy life, and they just carry on as, as a normal dog would. If this gets quite severe, so if the narrowing is quite extreme, then we start to get quite marked problems with, with the heart. So basically the, the heart has to work very, very hard to squeeze the blood past this narrowing. And so we get a lot of secondary changes to the heart and that progresses to heart failure. And it, it can be fatal in, in a lot of cases. So what we really look at doing with this, if we find a heart murmur on a puppy, then we recommend an ultrasound. We do have a degree of um, suspicion that this is what it is based on where we can actually hear the murmur. So we listen to different regions of the heart and this is quite a distinctive area. Um, but what we want to do is work out how severe the, the narrowing is. If it's quite severe, then it's a case of discussing what our options are. And the options that are available for this are, are, are surgery. Um, and so the older surgery would have been to try to actually widen that stenosis. Um, a balloon valvuloplasty, so where basically uh, a balloon on catheter is inserted into here and blown up to stretch things is also a possibility, but these are really referrals sort of cases. So yeah, some dogs are gonna be fine, they'll never have any problems. Other dogs, unfortunately, it does progress to heart failure and death. So it's something that it, it's worth investigating. So when your dog comes in for, or a puppy comes in for its vaccinations, we have a really good listen to the heart, see if we can um, hear any problems. If we do hear problems, then we're going to investigate a bit further and we'll see what can be done for, you, for your dog. But yeah, it's not a death sentence. If we do notice a heart memory in a puppy, it's something we need to investigate. And yeah, we may find it's fine. We might find we need to in, in, um, do a bit more work, but yeah, we can always see how it goes. Um, so yeah, if you notice your, or if you're concerned about your dog, um, signs you might notice is you might find that they don't have a lot of exercise tolerance. They become puff, they collapse with exercise, anything like that does need a vet to examine them quite quickly because this may be the underlying cause in a, in a young dog. Um, but there's plenty of other things that could be as well. So yeah, your vet's the best person to investigate that.